Right, who was Anne Hurst? Hmm, who was Anne Hurst? Well, I want to absolutely thank Helga Fox for unearthing all of the research so we can learn who Anne Hurst was. And I want to share this with you. It started here. Anne Hurst, Anne, bookseller, stationer, printer, and publisher of the Wakefield and Halifax Journal, which went out on a Friday in the building directly opposite Westgate Studios, patent medicine vendor, tea dealer, Westgate. Let's just take one of those things at a time. But first of all, I need to say she was a busy woman. Oh my word, she was a busy woman. All those jobs, all those jobs, a lot of the detail about Anne Hurst can be found on our broadsheets, which we haven't published yet. But if you would like a copy, if you could drop me a line at hello at dreamtimecreative.com, I will send you a copy of our as currently unpublished broadsheets about Anne Hurst. But she was clearly busy. She clearly had a head for business. And she was clearly, as a bookseller, an intellectual. And she was at the hub and the heart of the community. I would like to suggest that Anne, for years before her husband Roland died in 1823, was seeding the revolution. She was seeding a revolution in anti-slavery for several reasons. She was a hub, she was selling books, she was printing pamphlets, she was selling and providing tea. Tea originally was decided as being bad for women because it induced hysteria. Okay, that's fine. Tea from China, inducing hysteria in women. Anne didn't care about this because Anne was also a patent medicine seller. Now, if you're looking at patents, you're looking at the, um, it meant that the content of what she was selling was wrapped in a patented advertisement. But Anne clearly had interest in medicine because she was amplifying the need for funds for our very first hospital, the House of Recovery, just down at the bottom of Westgate. And she was also amplifying the needs for funds in her newspaper by asking people to go to balls and donate, donate money for our dispensary, which was based on Cross Street and Wood Street. Think about that that little corner. But as a woman, Anne will have been the product of her grandmothers and grandmothers held medicinal power. They had knowledge about herbs. They had knowledge about the use of um, herbs for medicines. And if you imagine Anne in the heart of the Westgate community, selling books, printing books, selling tea, linked really strongly to the, to the Unitarian Chapel, the Westgate Chapel, just a few hundred yards down the road from Westgate Studios, where we are now. She provided a powerful environment for people, intellectual, artists, those with who wanted to push against the injustices of everything to do with slavery and all of the other injustices around um, people's suffrage, she encouraged them, I believe, to come to her place of sale. We've had amazing independent bookshop, coffee shops here in Wakefield. One, and I'm going to name them Bruce Bites and Books. They've gone now because the rent was too high. So they attracted intellectuals, artists. I would meet people in there and we would discuss the ways of the world. What could we do? How could we change it? And then we would act on that. I would like to suggest that Anne was doing the same. She was encouraging people to dissent. She was, in, she was seeding the revolution. But until her husband Roland died and passed in 1823, she didn't have the power to act on that dissent. She had seeded the dissent, she had seeded the revolution. And then when she got hold of the keys to the printing press, everything changed. 
for the Wakefield and Halifax Journal expanded. It exploded. Anne's name was mentioned in the Sheffield Journal, in the York Journal, as someone who was enabling change in Wakefield. And how did she do this? She raised petitions, anti-slavery petitions, which went to Parliament. She printed articles. She wrote editorials. She put advertisements in. And she put pressure and educated people to change. Wakefield had been Tory-led. We had in Wakefield a movement led by the Unitarian Chapel, Johnson and Naylor, that wanted to see reform. They put pressure on the, the reform for the Corn Laws in Parliament, and they put pressure on other reforms of change, like anti-slavery change. So Anne Hurst was a, a Unitarian. So this was not recognising law. Um, it was seen as being something that was not acceptable. The main church didn't accept that. But it was that, that building, our Westwick Chapel here in Wakefield, was the centre, the hub of change. So Anne was printing every Friday the Wakefield and Halifax Express, and she expanded her her um, ability to reach many different people because there were sister publications. She held the keys to that printing press. She was the owner. She made the decisions, and she nailed her colours to the mast on the anti-slavery abolitionist cause. Why? Because they wanted to see political change in Wakefield. And by 1832, all of her pro-abolitionist um, work, all of the editorials, all of the articles, all of the stories had worked. And the men who were able to vote, because remember women didn't get the vote until 1928, all women didn't get the vote, men voted in Daniel Gaskell, Liberal MP, on the anti-slavery platform. So without Anne Hurst, without her radical, liberal, left-wing publication that was known throughout the land for being radical and liberal, without her, there wouldn't have been change. Daniel Gaskell was able to exert um, pressure on Parliament. And as a direct result of him being elected by the Wakefield people, the 1832 Abolition of Slavery Act directly influenced the hearts and minds of more people across the land. Anne Hurst was a light, a beacon in the darkness. Now in 1832, Anne dies and the paper is taken over by her son, but slavery continued. And by 1837, because it was convenient for slavery to continue, because many people were benefiting from slavery, unfortunately, Wakefield turned blue. There are some parallels here, I think, again. And the threat, and because Anne was such a powerful mover and shaker and influencer of change, because she continued to be a threat, there was a concerted effort by the Tory press at the time, men who wanted to diminish the power and the influence that she had. The Tory press at the time wrote her out. Anne became a tragic victim of the printing press and the profession. She had such a she had been such a resounding figurehead for. So Anne's legacy was lost until now. Her blue plaque will be going up on the uh, side of what is now the NatWest building in one of the yards, and it will be lit 
to show her story and we are incredibly proud of that. So, printing, the printing press. Anne had printing presses and she had them in the building that is now the Nat West Bank on Westgate, directly pretty much opposite Westgate Studios. And I am so honoured, I feel so honoured to have Carl Hardwick with us today, who is going to talk to you about the printing presses that Anne used and explain to you how he has managed to get printing presses that Anne quite possibly used that have come from Wakefield. So I'm going to hand you over to Carl. These two printing presses, there's the wooden one, the large size one, and the metal one. I got these from um, the History Centre at Margaret Street. When the Archive Centre moved to near Wetcliffe Station, these were surplus to requirements, and so I had a chance to buy these two. This one now belongs to Subji Brumby. She is a bookbinder. And so she's going to use this one as a book bag. And this one belongs to me. But they are sort of a living in Westgate Studios. I don't think they'll go anywhere from here. Um, this one is completely made of wood. When you look at it, the, all the joints, the dovetail joints, and they're strengthened by dowels or corners. Um, it's a wooden spiral that fits still there. That just turns to make the plates open now in exactly the same way as this one. That just turns. These are really heavy weights that are on the corners of these, so you can turn it a lot easier. When you get it to be tight, it'll go down really tight, so you can do a really good press. These are slightly movable, and it's sort of a self leveling thing. I actually thought when I got them that they were loose, but they're not. That's how they are supposed to. Printing, right, I think printing started, the first ever print was when a caveman put his hand in mud and went like that on the wall and made a yellow hand print. And then he probably made another one with a couple of patterns. They are still to be seen, I think they're in caves in Australia with paintings of bison and whatever else. But the difference between those two things one is artwork that's been drawn, and the other is a print, because while ever you're alive, you can do that same print forever, which is what printing is. It's being able to recreate something time and time again. Do you remember this incredible image, our central image from the 1825 reimagined? Um, we've Obviously, we've got Zainab here who created that image, and she's actually done a lino for us. Do you want to hand it to Carl? There you go. So Carl's going to print that lino. I just basically, so it's a very similar concept to the lino, but with the potato. Um, so I've just carved out the bits that I want to print, uh, so the, the bits that are going to be sort of negative space. Um, the things, the, the bits that are left are going to be printed for you. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit. I've sort of printed one already. It's amazing. It's okay. There you go. So it's going to look a little something like that. So all you did was cut a potato in half. Yep. I don't want to oversimplify this, I'm absolutely not a printer. Um, cut potato in half, drew the, the design on, and then cut away the negative space. Yes, yeah. so, so okay. the, yeah, the bit that I've cut away is going to be the negative space. Right. The the yeah. That's not the green. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to, just regular acrylic paint on the brush. Oh, wow. There you go. Look at that, and they've got your white hand and your black hand mm -hmm. holding hands because together we are stronger. 
Thank you. Yeah. Wow, amazing. And Carl, here, I'll just swing this around to Carl again. Do you want to show us your second print, Carl? Or shall I just hold it up? I've done it on the pink paper because it's a one colour print. It's just black, but it gives you another colour. Just the paper itself. Isn't that powerful? What a powerful image. And I love the way, Zainab, you picked up in your response again, you need the original artist, the hands in your, your potato print. Who knew, people, that you could do that with a potato? <laughs> by an army of Dolly Peg suffragettes, which, uh, suffragettes, which is incredible. These are all being made by participants from other events. Um, other arts and crafts that Dreamtime Creative have sent out uh, as by a doorstep creations, which was a wonderful way to engage with the community by a lockdown. Um, so I've made my own dolly peg, which I'm hoping that it stands up to the rest of these wonderful, wonderful contributions. Um, bear in mind, I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really into this kind of And Hurst. It's Anne Hurst. So there she is, my little Anne Hurst, who I love so much. And she resembles my salt and pepper that's in my hair as well. <laughs> um, in, in earnest of us not being able to get to the, the hairdressers, Anne, isn't it? Um, but we, we love our grey, makes us who we are. So, yep, yeah, that's my little Dolly Peg contribution. Um, feel free to make your own. They're quite, they're quite simple, really. She's just got a little little stand at the bottom and she just sits in it and yeah she's I'm quite quite pleased with that thank you for if anybody does want a dolly peg suffragist creation doorstep creation kit um just email us at hello at dreamtimecreative.com and Hurst my teas and tinctures receipts passed down from mothers mend all broken things including heartache herpes and hymen repair for the discerning gentlemen about town. This indulgence may or may not be newsworthy or column cut it in my newspaper whose mere scribbles elucidate spin by gentlemen who want sugar with everything regardless. Broken blacks are necessary to state their insatiable needs. Absolutely. And so the Wakefield and Halifax Journal will expose injustice, convenient truths peddled by slavers, profit lords who ignore death and excuse evil as a normal necessity to white linen tea tables. <laughs>